Oh, there it goes. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. I'm having iced tea because I've already had some coffee this morning. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have more coffee later, but right now I'm having tea. So, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Saturday and I'm off for a whole week now. So, uh, I'm going to be doing some fitness stuff. And Oh, yesterday. Oh, my goodness. I had two taekwondo sessions and uh, it was a regular sparring class and then i had a private lesson thank you miss wyatt that was that was awesome because uh getting ready for another midterm testing and uh then i you know i uh, went for went for a walk walked a few miles and i got ten thousand steps yesterday uh, needless to say i went to bed really really tired last night so uh feeling feeling great this morning just feeling good um so anyway uh, welcome back to Coffee in the Word, and this morning I'm going to start off with the daily prayer uh, for the for the morning. Just the just the first part of it. Um, I highly recommend getting into you know the regular the regular prayer at the times of day. Uh, you don't have to do it every day and every you know like like for instance, um, this uh, this app has the morning prayer, the noon prayer, early evening, and close of day, but. Uh, you know, I highly recommend making prayer part of your life, and uh, it's it's just it's awesome. Um, so, uh, the morning prayer it starts off in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Get a little tea here. My throat's dry. Uh, the psalmody this morning is Psalm 114. So here we go. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back, O mountains that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. All right. Uh, the Old Testament lesson this morning. Uh, we started Daniel yesterday, so we're in Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 through 23. And here we go. In the second year, uh, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show you the interpretation. Then the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn from limb from limb, and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. And they answered a second time, and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and then we will show, you, show its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time, because you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know 
that you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demands, for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult. If no one can show, show it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel as, and his companions to kill them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. And he declared to Arioch, uh, the king's captain, Why is this decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel. And Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. Then Daniel went to his house and made matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God for ever and ever, to whom belongs wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up, sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and in the light dwells and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise. For you have given me wisdom and might, and have known and have now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. All right. Well, yesterday we finished up Matthew in the New Testament. And uh, uh, and uh, this morning, this is interesting. Uh, we're going to Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 24. It's allotted for today, so here we go. And after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others, and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in, a, in the cup she mixed, as she glorified herself and lived in luxury. So give her a like measure of torment and mourning, since in her uh, since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen and am now a widow. I am now a widow and mourning I shall never see. For this reason her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, the great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys her cargo any more, cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, 
wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and slaves, that is, human souls. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares, who gained wealth from her, will stand far off, in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city, that was, clo that was closed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels, and with pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors, and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying aloud, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence, and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and music musicians, of flute players and trumpeters, will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were, were the great ones of the earth. And all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and of all who had been slain on the earth. And this is the word of the Lord. Wow. Okay, the hymnody this morning. It's lo, he comes with clouds descending. All right. Every eye shall now behold him, robed in glorious majesty. Those who said at naught and, and sold him, pierced and nailed him to the tree, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, shall their true Messiah see. All right. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you call heaven and all the saints and apostles and prophets to rejoice when those who pretend to be true the true church are brought to judgment. Help us to discern between what is true and what is false, always knowing that your kingdom comes through humility and suffering, and that the truth of the gospel is found in you alone. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. All right, well, I want to get my day started today. Y'all have a fantastic day, and uh, I guess I will see you tomorrow. So with that, I'm going to sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.